Hi, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Denver Waters Lead Reduction Program virtual community meeting. Uh, before we jump into it, I'd like to invite our interpreter, Nicholas, on the line to invite any of our Spanish speaking participants over to the Spanish event. Nicholas? Buenas tardes con todos y con todas. Eh, por favor, si es que quieren eh, escuchar esta reunión en español, por favor, opriman asterisco cero. Good afternoon, everyone. If you want to listen to this meeting in Spanish, please press uh, star zero. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Nicholas. Um, and if you are joining us over the phone and you would like to um, join via video so you can see some of our slides, if you go to denverwater.org, you'll see a blue bar at the top of that website with a link to join via video. If you'd like to stay on the phone, no worries, you'll be able to fully participate that way as well. Um, with that, we'll just go into our agenda for the evening. So we are here to give you an overview of the lead reduction program and really dive into um, how water filters fit into the program, give you some tips and tricks for getting the most out of your water filter. Um, so we'll give you an overview of the entire lead reduction program. We'll be able to take a few questions about other pieces of the program. There's usually some questions about construction, um, some other pieces that folks might be interested in, and then we'll dive into um, filters and have a couple opportunities to take your questions throughout. We wanna make sure we can get to as many questions as we can. Uh, with that, uh, just a couple guidelines for the meeting, just to make sure we can have everything flow smoothly tonight. Um, so uh, we will have a couple poll questions uh, throughout. We really encourage you to participate in those. It helps us also hear from you, um, get some useful information to us. Um, so those will be coming up here shortly. If you at any point in time have a question that you would like to get in the question queue, if you're on the phone, you can press star three and that'll get you in the queue to ask your question. You'll still be able to listen to the meeting as it's going on. And then if you're joining us uh, online, you can use that comment bo box to uh, get your question in the queue here. And again, we're gonna try to take as many of those questions as we can. Like I mentioned, this meeting is really focused on filters. Um, we know there's lots of other questions about other pieces of the program as well. We'll try to take a few of those. Um, we also encourage everybody um, to go to that website, denverwater.org slash lead. We've got recordings from other community meetings we've done on other topics like construction, like scheduling service line replacements. Um, so we also encourage everybody if you've got a bigger interest in things other than filters to go check out those recordings as well. Um, and there's a ton of information on that website, um, videos, fact sheets, um, lots of good stuff there. And then it is not just me here tonight. I have a couple colleagues with me. Um, Gianna Lombardi and Pam Williams are both uh, community relations senior specialists. There they are. Uh, lucky to have them here tonight to share information with us and answer your questions. So with that, we are going to jump right into our first poll question. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so our question is, how are you using your pitcher filter, other water filter, or bottled water if you're in the lead reduction program? So you would press one for all drinking and cooking, press two for some drinking and cooking, press three for drinking only, and press four for I am not using um, the water filter. So again, the question is, if you're in the lead reduction program, how are you using your water pitcher filter, other water filter, or bottled water? Uh, press one for, I'm using that filter for all drinking and cooking. Press two for, I'm only using it for some drinking and cooking. Press three for, I'm only using that filter for drinking water. And press four uh, for, I am not using filtered water. You've got, I can see some responses coming in. Um, so this is great because it looks like um, we've got a lot of people 
Um, 47 percent who are using filtered water for all their drinking and cooking needs, which is awesome. We're going to be talking about that a lot tonight. And then we've got another good percentage who are using it for some drinking and cooking um, and for drinking only. Um, but we've got a solid 41 percent who say they're using it for all drinking and cooking. And again, I know that the cooking piece is probably the hardest one for folks, and we're going to be talking about that a lot tonight. Um, before we get into filters, though, I'd like to um, jump into an overview of the whole lead reduction program. We've got a short video that we like to show just to give you a break from hearing us uh, talking. If you are joining over the phone, fear not. The video has some great narration um, describing everything that's being shown, so you should be able to follow along just fine. Uh, so with that, we'll queue up the video. Taking action to help protect current and future generations from lead in drinking water. It's why Denver Water launched its new lead reduction program in 2020. While the water sent to customers is lead free, lead can get into water if it passes through service lines that are made of lead. This is important because lead in water can have significant health impacts, especially for pregnant women, infants, and young children. Service lines are the pipes that connect Denver Water's water mains in the street to homes and businesses. Customers own the service lines, Denver Water owns the water mains. As part of the lead reduction program, Denver Water has an estimated 64 to 84,000 properties in its service area that have lead service lines. The utility plans to replace these lines with new, lead-free copper pipes at no direct cost to the customer. Most of the properties are homes built before 1951. Pipe replacement will take place on a neighborhood-by-neighborhood -neighborhood basis starting in 2020. It will take 15 years to replace all the lines. Priority will be given to areas with a large number of facilities that serve infants and children, areas with high concentrations of lead service lines, and underserved neighborhoods. Reducing the risk of lead in water at home is another important part of the lead reduction program. That's why Denver Water is sending customers a free pitcher and water filters. The filters are certified to remove lead and should be used for drinking, cooking, and making infant formula or other beverages. While the primary source of lead in drinking water comes from lead service lines in the ground, lead can also get into water through household plumbing that contains lead. This includes faucets and fittings made before 2014, as well as solder that was used to connect copper pipes before 1987. To help protect all customers from these sources of lead in drinking water, Denver Water is increasing the pH level of the water it delivers to its service area. This higher pH will strengthen an existing protective coating inside pipes and plumbing, which reduces the likelihood of lead getting into water. This change will not impact the taste and odor of the water. This comprehensive program was approved by the Environmental Protection Agency, as well as the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. You can learn more about the lead reduction program at denverwater.org lead or call 303-893-2444. for everybody. We're going to give um, the, our Spanish meeting just a couple seconds to catch up um, so that we are all synced up. Um, just a quick preview. I know we've got a lot of interest in the lead service line replacements. And so even though we are here to talk primarily about filters, we will definitely be going over some of that tonight as well, since we do know that is top of mind for a lot of folks. Um, so we'll give it just a few more seconds and then we will hop into that. All right, so uh, again, I know everybody's interested not just in water filters, but also in that those service line replacements and what that process looks like. So before we dive into the filter program, going to turn it over to Pam to give us a high level overview of what that service line replacement process looks like. And then we'll um, take a few questions after that. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. So uh, first, I want to maybe take a step back here a little bit and just talk about if you're uh, have their screen up, what you're seeing, and if you're on the phone, what folks are seeing is a map of Denver Waters service area. So we want to make sure people know the area that we cover. 
Um, and the lead reduction program actually covers our entire Denver water service area. Our service area on the map, if you can see it, is the colored blue and green areas on the map. So for folks on the phone, what we're seeing, uh, if you can't see that, what you're looking at here, what folks are looking at is the city and county of Denver is what we cover, as well as surrounding areas like Wheat Ridge, Littleton, and Lakewood. Um, and one thing we like to know, because we do get a lot of questions, um, we do not cover Aurora or Inglewood. Those are not in the Denver Water Service area. And on the next portion here, talking about whether or not, you know, you may be thinking, am I in the program? Am I not? Do I have lead in my water? Or maybe you just moved in somewhere. You know, if you're really unsure about whether or not your property or maybe your neighbor, grandmother, friend, someone, um, is part of the lead reduction program, we have a really great tool that you can use. It's on our Denver Water website. And you can find out if you're in the program by using the map that is on our website. You just type in your address or the address you're looking for. And that map and the website is denverwater.org slash lead. Um, and for anyone that can see the screen at the bottom uh, of each slide, the blue bar running along there, that website is listed there. And speaking of the lead reduction program and the inventory that we have and how many lines and whose lines, we there's a range of estimated lead service lines because we actually don't own or Denver Water doesn't own the service line. So records of what they are made of have actually been scattered and inconsistent. That service line is customer owned. So running from the street up to the property um, and through the lead reduction program, Denver Water is actually able to replace around 5,000 of these customer owned lead service lines a year at no direct cost to the customer. And the amount of replacements is actually increasing this year due to federal funding that we received this year. Since we started the program in 2020, we've actually replaced over 18,000 service lines. Um, so a great amount of work has been done. Of course, we still have a ways to go. Um, our annual work planning. So I know there's been some questions and it's the number already in the um, coming in, I'm sure tonight. Um, and it's on people's minds of when are you coming to my house? It's the number one question we get. And, you know, we don't know year 10 or year seven. Um, we're not planning all those years in advance. We're doing annual work planning. And the reason for that is we're really focusing on underserved and disproportionately impacted communities and those that are most vulnerable from lead exposure. And there's also other that factors like planned construction activities, coordinating with the city or those other jurisdictions and cities that I mentioned um, when they have projects maybe going on. There could be paving restrictions that we can't back, get back into an area. And we're also looking at the densely populated areas where there are still a lot of lead service lines. So each year we plan that. The best thing that I tell people to do is go check out our map um, on the website. It's a separate map from the inventory to see the plan construction activity. And that's denverwater.org slash pipes. Um, and you can see the work that we're doing each year. And then we plan for each year about the fall that gets released, October, November timeframe of where we're going the next year. And you'll know it's your turn. We will send you a packet of information in the mail before we come to your area that explains the process. We need to get homeowners consent. So that's a good indication of knowing that it's your turn. And then Rachel, I think is gonna do a few questions for us. Yeah, I'm gonna um, do kind of a firing round at you, Pam, of construction related questions here, um, since we are getting sure. a lot of those. Um, so first one, we've got Doug online who's asking um, how much lead is in the water? So I know there's several considerations there and pieces and wondering if you can give a, a good overview of that. Thank you, Doug, good question. Um, there is no lead in the water that Denver Water is delivering. 
um, to the property. So no water in our mains, the leads, the water that we're getting from the mountains and treating where the, it becomes a problem is the moment it hits your customer owned service line that I was speaking of that's connected to the main and goes into the house. So that's the primary source of lead and drinking water, that service line, that pipe, those pipes that were made of lead previously. Um, and every house varies that has a lead service line, what those levels are. There is a little bit of protection from the way that we're treating the water with pH. Um, and the last piece I'll mention to that is, um, if you are in the program or if anyone else on the phone is wondering this question, if you haven't already, if we haven't sent it to you or you haven't requested one, my suggestion would be to get a free water test kit that Denver Water sends to customers in the program or who are wondering if there's lead in their drinking water at home. The kit comes to you. You could collect those samples and then send it back. The postage is already paid for so that um, our lab can run the test and you can get those results to see exactly um, what's going on at your property. Great. Thanks, Pam. Um, and then probably the most asked question, which I see from a number of people online and on the phone here is, um, they're saying, I, I live in this neighborhood, this is my address, when is my area I'm gonna be coming up for service line replacement? So if you can kind of give us another bit of an overview of that uh, planning and scheduling process and how people can keep tabs on that. Sure. So again, resource-wise, best thing I tell people, denverwater.org slash pipes. It will show our lead reduction program work that our contractors are doing. It will also show the work that our Denver water crews are doing for main replacements, which is the pipe in the street. And if we come across lead lines through those projects, we're replacing those as well. Um, everything is in there loaded for 2023. 2024 will be released released probably later this year, I would say October, November timeframe. So um, for you folks that are asking those specific questions, what about my address? Great time to look then to see those polygons on the map, where we're headed for 2024. And if you hover over that, typically we'll show what contractor, if it's a contractor doing the work to your area um, and what the timing is on that. Will it be the summertime of 2024 and the fall, the spring, um, so, you know, I, I really wish, you know, every time anyone asks us this question, I wish I could say exactly what future year it might be. But, you know, as I had mentioned previously, we're only planning that on an annual basis. Thanks, Pam. I'm sure we might um, repeat that again a couple of times because it is top of mind, of course, for everybody. I'm taking a more, couple more questions about construction. So online question from Jocelyn asking about what work needs to be done in the home um, when the home's uh, service line is being replaced? So sounds like asking about what might happen inside of the home. Sure. So the water service line I keep talking about that's customer owned, it's coming into houses typically in the basement, in the crawl space. Um, sometimes folks, you know, your basement's finished, so it might be behind a wall that's covered. So may need to cut out a piece of that drywall to get access to that pipe, um, or if it's unfinished or in the crawl space, moving things out of the way, furniture, boxes, to make sure that our crews can get access to that. Um, so that's some of the interior pieces that need to happen. So there might be a little construction um, happening and that gets outlined in all that um, information in the packet. And the last piece I'll mention that is, before we start any work, uh, homeowners have to consent to the work. And some people just send that in, they wanna do it no matter what. Some folks say, you know, I really wanna know a little bit more and walk through this process and that's okay. We do what's called an in-home consultation visit. So the contractors, the crews that are doing that work are gonna walk through with you inside the property um, go through those things that I mentioned and actually outside the house so that you have a full understanding of what's about to happen, what the crews or what Denver Water would be responsible for putting back in place uh, and replacing and what you would be responsible for as the property owner. So there's some distinctions there. Great, thanks Pam. And then 
Um, on the reverse side of that, we've got a question from Ron about um, in terms of the work happening outside, um, will my lawn be dug up? Um, what about landscaping? If you can address what will happen there. Sure. Short answer is yes, it might be a little bit. Um, you know, the outside of houses are all set up a little differently. Sometimes there's a tree lawn area between the street, grass, sidewalk, house. Sometimes it just goes from the street to the house, to the yard. Um, you know, we aren't digging a big, long trench. I think sometimes people think that um, we're doing a boring method. So they're cutting a square. I think it's mm, four foot by four foot. Um, don't quote me on that. I always forget the size, but doing some digging in the street, doing a street cut and then a cut closer to the house where they can pull that line through if they're able to or bore a new one underground. So depending on again where the meter is where the lines entering the property there's likely impact to yard maybe it's in a mulch or rock area or uh, flowers maybe it's just grass but that is one thing that denver water and the contractor crews we are responsible for um, replacing and putting back is compacting that leveling that area and putting that seed or that piece of sod back or um, replacing that mulch or rock that maybe had to get removed. That is a common question and a good one. Yeah, thanks, Pam. And apologies, the train is going behind me right now outside if anybody's picking up on that on the audio. Uh, but thanks for answering those questions, Pam. I will say real quick, I see a couple questions um, that I can quickly address before we move on to our next section. Um, so another resource that we do have at denverwater.org slash lead is there is a tab on there for our program dashboard that shows um, our yearly progress on how many service lines we've replaced to date, um, how many service lines we've investigated to determine their material, all of those key metrics are really on that dashboard. So I know there was a question about how many lines we've replaced so far this year. And the answer to that is I think a little over 3,500 so far um, this year, but just wanted to plug that program dashboard at denverwater.org slash lead if folks are interested in keeping tabs on the program that way. And um, with that, we do have um, a couple more Q&A sessions that we're gonna have this evening, but I wanna make sure we can get through our content. So I'm gonna move us to our next section. I'm going to you, Gianna, if you can provide us an overview of how filters fit into the program and when they should be used. Sure, no problem. Good evening, everybody. Um, as you heard in the over overview video, filters are a really important part of the lead reduction program. They're critical in reducing the risk of lead in the water at your home while we work to replace lead service lines. Um, since Denver Water kicked off the lead production program in 2020, we have distributed over 800,000 free water filters, um, including replacement filters, to customers that are enrolled in our program. We continue to distribute filters to all customers enrolled in the program until their lead service line has been replaced. Um, pitchers and filters were delivered in these boxes to your home. Um, hopefully you guys can see this in my shot here. Um, on the inside of the box, you should have received this um, pitcher. This is what the pitcher looks like. Um, and when you receive this, the filter itself will come inside the pitcher. So this is what it looks like. Um, Customers in the lead reduction program should use filtered drinking water for cooking and preparing um, infant formula. It's critical when you use your water pitcher filter, not only just for drinking and preparing infant formula, but also when you're cooking, cooking um, especially when you're preparing foods like rice, beans, and soup that absorb the water. Um, boiling the water does not remove lead. In addition to cooking it, it's also important to use filtered water when making tea and coffee. Use filtered water um, until six months after your um, service line is replaced is also key to this program. Um, so once your service line is replaced, you wanna continue using that um, just to make sure all of the debris and lead is fully removed from your line. 
Um, and now I'm going to turn it back over to Pam to talk about what do you do if you have a missing or broken filter. So we know things happen and life happens and that's okay. Um, things get lost in the mail, which of course maybe not be any of our faults. Um, and or and or things break, which that can happen a lot. Um, and if you need a replacement filter or pitcher, that's okay. Just let us know. Um, there are multiple ways that you can contact us. For those of you um, that can see the video, they're listed there, but I'll read them out for those on the phone. Um, you can call us, which is our Denver Water Customer Care Group. They're at 303-893-2444. If you prefer email or to do your business online, we have an online form. That's again, denverwater.org slash filter for that form. Or you can just send an email to the mailbox, lead at denverwater.org. We do automatically send filters. So for anyone that you know saw a video, Gianna had set up or held up the small little replacement filter kind of cartridge that goes inside the pitcher. Um, and for those of you on the phone, maybe uh, visualizing that if you get the pitcher and the filter. So we automatically send those to properties in the program. Um, but sometimes there is a gap, especially with rental properties, because we don't always know when people are moving in and out. If we do and we know that, we're getting those new pictures and those replacement filters to new folks moving in or maybe buy, you're buying the house. We do know about that. Um, and you should get those and can use those when we send them out. And renters and landlords should be letting Denver Water know when folks are moving in and out so we can get that to the new tenant um, what, what they're needing. So if you're a renter or you're a landlord on this call and you're owning property, um, letting us know that would be excellent. Um, if you're renting, maybe you moved in recently, you get one of those replacement filters in the mail and you're wondering what this is and what it goes to, you might be missing the other part in the picture. So please, please reach out to us. We wanna make sure we're getting those pictures and filters to folks so you can use them for the drinking, cooking, and infant formula needs that you may have. And then following uh, the distribution of the pitchers and filters, you know, we wanna see uh, how they're being used and if they're being used. Um, you know, we did the poll question at the beginning of this call. We do something similar in the mail. We actually distribute 15,000 surveys each year to hear from you, from our customers about the filter use. And our most recent survey was actually from last year. We're getting ready to send the next one for this year here soon. Um, we learned from about 1,500 customers that responded. 94% are using their filter to prepare infant formula. So really great response there. 93% were using their filter for drinking and 73% are using, uh, reported using it for cooking. So we're really, really glad to see our customers are using uh, filtered water. Uh, we do have a sad red face next to the result of 73% of customers using for filter water for cooking. So a little bit of room for improvement there. And just want to reiterate, as Rachel mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about the using water for cooking. It really is critical to use your water pitcher filter, not only for drinking an infant formula, um, but also when cooking. So thinking about when you're preparing foods like rice, beans, soup that absorb a lot of water. Um, and one really important thing to note, um, we've learned over time and um, our community partners share with us and share the message as well, um, boiling water does not remove lead. So in addition to cooking, it's also important to use filter water when making tea and coffee. So think about water, we all need to be hydrated, but we're making other drinks, tea, lemonade, coffee. And again, boiling water it does not remove lead. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the survey uh, for 2023 is actually going to be going out later this year, I think next month. So be on the lookout. If you're on the call, you're in our filter program, see if you get that in the mail. We'd love to have you return it. Great. Thanks, Pam. Um, so we're going to go into our second poll question for tonight. And then right after that, we'll jump into another Q&A session. I know there's lots of questions coming in. Uh, so first, though, we do want to hear from you all 
Uh, what is the greatest barrier to using filtered water when cooking? Uh, so press one for not having enough filtered water on hand. Press two for water takes longer to heat for cooking. Press three for water takes too long to be filtered. Press four for hard to remember, not a part of my normal routine. So again, it's really helpful for us to hear about what are the biggest challenges for folks when it comes to using filtered water for cooking. So asking you, what is the greatest barrier to using filtered water when cooking? Uh, press one for not having enough filtered water on hand. Press two for water takes longer to heat for cooking. Press three for water takes too long to be filtered. Or press four for it's just too hard to remember. It's not a part of my normal routine. And see some responses coming in. And it looks like most folks are saying that not having enough filtered water on hand is the biggest challenge. Um, right after that, it's water takes too long to be filtered. Um, so thank you for responding to that, letting us have some of that insight that helps us as we continue to think about the program and any ways we can um, support uh, folks using filtered water. With that, we'll go to our next um, question and answer session. Um, so I know we do have some filter related questions coming in. So the first question, I'm gonna go to you, uh, Gianna. Um, we've got a question about when will I get a new filter? Every customer that is enrolled in the program, you will automatically get a new filter replaced um, and sent to you. And this is what they look like. Um, and that'll come every six months to your house um, and be directly delivered to you. If you're not receiving that, um, please call our customer care line or visit our website um, and we'll be happy to fix that for you and make sure that you're getting that um, new filter every six months. Great. Thanks, Gianna. Uh, next one, Pam, question online from Jerry about um, using filtered water for showering and brushing teeth. So really do uh, customers need to be using filtered water when taking a shower? Um, and what about when brushing teeth? Short answer, no and no. So um, it is safe for bathing and showering for you and for your kiddos or whoever's in your home. Um, a skin really doesn't absorb lead in water at levels that cause a health concern. Um, the one thing with brushing teeth, I would say, you know, just be sure to avoid swallowing a large amount of water when brushing. Um, you know, if folks want to filter or pour from their pitcher in their cup and rinse with the filter water while brushing, totally fine to do so, um, but not necessary. Great. Thanks, Pam. Um, and then kind of on those same lines, a question about, um, do we need to be using filtered water for rinsing fruits and vegetables? Good one. So it is safe to use unfiltered water on your garden vegetables, fruits and vegetables. So short answer, no, you don't need to have to. Can if you want to. Um, plants and vegetables actually have tissues that serve as a natural filtration system which prevent them from picking up any traces of lead. Um, and I would say for both of those topics, um, you know, the more information on other potential sources of lead in the home, really detailed lead um, exposure questions, and these are common ones that we get, um, going to visit Colorado's Department of Health and Environment's website, which is CDPHE for short, we call it um, in-house at Denver Water, um, they have a lot of really great information and you know really just looking at there are lead exposures beyond lead in drinking water obviously that's our area of expertise um, being in the water industry but we always like to mention that to folks as well because we really want to you know keep supporting public health as well thanks pam on um, one more question coming your way. This one's online from Jerry. Uh, very appropriate for this time of year. Question is, I've got a huge healthy garden. Is it still fine um, to water that with the hose? Yes, sure is. Um, I think similar to, um, you know, the rinsing with the fruits and vegetables. 
um, you know, using that unfiltered water um, to give your garden a drink, uh, I think is okay. And, you know, one thing I'll actually mention as well is um, we, there's kind of a couple layers of protection for Denver water. So the filters, which we're talking about a lot that we send for folks for consumption, um, but also the way that we're treating the water um, and for corrosion control so that, you know, we're trying to mitigate that lead from flaking and leaching off and getting into the water from the service line. So um, the water treatment is helping with that a little bit, but yes, um, watering your garden is safe as well. Great. Thanks, Pam. Uh, just another switching back to um, some more of that construction related piece, wondering if you can kind of go over again with the overall lead reduction program when we're looking at replacing any lead service lines if you can just go over again what we mean by the service line we've got some questions about what about the water main in the street there's main to meter portions meter to the home if you can just clarify again what we're really talking about when we're talking about that pipe replacement sure i know these are really popular questions and i can appreciate that um we have an awesome little image and it's probably somewhere here in my office i can find it but uh you know think about you're driving down the road that's the the street right and there's a big main running underneath that um and then from the main and the street your house is tapped to that and then it goes into the house um so that entire portion is the customer owned service line that we're placing so from the main to the meter portion and the meter to the house portion. So I know sometimes that can be confusing for folks thinking, is it the whole thing? Is it part of it? What do I own? Um, so again, the whole line from the main all the way into the house is customer owned, but Denver Water is replacing that entire line um, from lead to copper, which is now the industry standard um, at the tap, at the main, to the meter, and from the meter into the house. Great. Thanks, Pam. Um, so I'm going to move us on to our next session, but we will have another question and answer opportunity. Um, so we're continuing to go through all those questions that are coming in. Uh, for right now, though, I'm wondering if we can go to you, Gianna. Um, we did just hear um, from some folks about how it is challenging to use filtered water for all of your cooking needs. Uh, so if you can just jump into that a little bit. Um, tell us some of your, your favorite tips and tricks, um, some recommendations that Denver Water has on how to make it a little bit easier to use filtered water for cooking. Sure. Um, I love to cook and a lot of my recipes that I like to make um, do require using filtered water. Um, for example, I love to make sausage tortellini soup. Um, since some of the water is boiled and absorbed into the soup um, when cooking, um, the boiling water does not remove that lead. So I always make sure that I have extra filtered water on hand before I start cooking. Um, to make that easier, I keep these following tips in mind. Um, when filling up your pitcher, it can be really tempting to try and add as much water as quickly as possible to the filter basin. Um, but this actually puts you at risk of mixing unfiltered water with your filtered water that's already in the pitcher. So stop at the fill line really helps preventing that from happening. Um, like I said earlier, Denver Water will send you a replacement filter approximately every six months. And it's super important that you replace your filter as soon as you receive it. Um, this will really ensure that your filter is working as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Um, an old filter also increases the amount of time needed to filter that water. So make sure when you're getting that, um, that new filter, and later on, it'll also let you know here on the top of your filter um, when comes time to replace that filter. So you can also see that on top of your picture, but every six months um, is most important to make sure you're replacing that. Um, I also really like to prepare filtered water ahead of time when I know I need to cook. Um, and so to do this, I'll run water through the pitcher filter and then I'll pour the filtered water into an extra storage container and then place that into my fridge. And that can be um, another giant like gallon um, container, um, giant um, Tupperware containers. You can use those as well. 
It's really helpful when I know I'm going to need a really large pot of filtered water to make that tortellini sausage soup. Um, and one more thing to keep in mind when using these filters, it's really important to keep your filter um, stored in a cool, dark, dry place just to prevent any kind of mold or bacteria growth. Um, Pam's now going to talk to us about um, refrigerator filters. Yes, this is actually a common question that we get, and I'm sure it's probably in our queue of questions tonight, possibly too. Um, what we see is my refrigerator has a water filter. Does it remove lead? Uh, and frankly, it's a tricky question. Um, and the answer is maybe, um, but we can help you find out the answer. So if you're looking at the screen, what you're seeing is an image there on filters. Um, it's NSF standard 53, what you want to look for. And that's an important thing to know when determining if a filter removes lead, whether or not it's certified to N as in Nancy, S as in Sam, F as in Frank, standard 53. There's a lot of different filters out there and depending on what they're certified to remove, that may or may not include lead as one of the contaminants. So really important to see what type and number you have in your refrigerator. You know, mine at least we have, it's the top left corner and this little slot opens up and then you twist and take it out. Um, that's what we really, I really, we really recommend people to do is open your, filter, your refrigerator, take a look at what filters in there and what that number is. Um, and that website is nsf.org. So you could go there to see what kind of fridge do I have? What kind of filter do I need? Um, so filters that are certified to this standard are tested by the NSF to ensure that they remove lead. And the pitcher filters and the filters we've been talking about tonight that are distributed by Denver Water are certified to that NSF 53 standard. So again, check your fridge filter, make sure it meets that certification, um, look for that NSF seal and the number's 53. Um, so now we've addressed the refrigerator filter portion. Um, Rachel, I'll turn it over to you to take a few more questions that I'm sure that we have. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Pam. Uh, so jumping right into it, uh, we've got an online question from our Miho um, saying that our pitcher lid is broken. So Pam, can you uh, remind folks if they have a missing water filter or something's broken, if they need an extra one because they're going through a lot of water, um, how folks can um, reach out to us and get that taken care of? Sure, no problem on the lid. Let's get you a new one. So you can do one of three things. Call us, call Denver Water, 303-893-2444, customer care, get you hooked up. You can go online and send an email, lead at denverwater.org, or you can go straight to a self-serve form on the website that you can fill out. Um, and the short link for that is denverwater.org slash filter. So not a problem, broken, we can get it. Um, you have multiple people maybe living in your family or multiple families living in your home. That's okay, we can send an extra picture with filters, um, we do that as well. Those are the, again, same process that you'd go through to get that extra picture um, or if you have a broken one, or as Gianna had mentioned, if that light on the top of that filter goes off sooner than the six months that we send you a new one, you drink a lot of water, that's okay, and use a lot of water, that's great. Um, we can get you a filter, replacement filter sooner than the one that gets sent to you automatically. Great, thanks Pam. i uh, got another question here about, it's more of a timing question. Um, when can we expect to not have um, lead in the water anymore? If you can talk about what that looks like for, for customers, probably in terms of both um, a reminder on how we schedule the replacements and then um, just kind of the overall timeline for the program. Sure. So, um, you know, we're going to replace the whole service line underground, like I said, from the main into the house. So. That's the lead's coming out and then getting replaced with copper. 
crews are going to flush that line outside to get any residual lead particulate out of the line, out of the internal plumbing. And they're going to come inside and do an internal flush. And they're gonna, we're going to ask you as a customer to do internal flush as well. So really to make sure things are safe, there's extra lead particulate that could be floating around for a little bit even after that construction. We recommend that you use your certified to remove lead pitcher filter uh, for six months after replacement. And at the four or five month mark, we're gonna automatically send out some information to offer up to have you test your water um, and do one of those water test kits. So that way you could actually see for yourself too, what's going on at the plumbing at your house, make sure that those lead numbers have gone down. Uh, so the main source of lead is gonna be in that service line, um, which there could be some stuff still floating around after. So use the filter for six months afterwards, do the water test, um, request one when we send you that information. And then the last piece, um, you know, we're not replacing the internal plumbing in the home. So your house could have lead pipes internally. You could have galvanized pipes which have some lead components. Um, you could have some faucets and fixtures that have lead components. Some of the lead solder um, and different things and brass fixtures, those lead components weren't removed until after 2014. So it's not as high of a risk, the biggest risk and the biggest um, culprit for lead in drinking water is that service line, but there could be some things in your internal plumbing. So that's why the testing is really good to do and following those flushing instructions because flushing at your faucets, removing your aerator, the little screen underneath, those things can help reduce that lead that could be um, in the plumbing if you have something like that going on inside of your house. And hopefully I answered your question, Rachel. I think there might have been another one in there that I didn't address. And if so, just let me know. Yeah, no, I think that was great information about um, a particular property and what might be happening. And then maybe if you can just quickly speak to the overall timing for the full uh, program and what we're looking like in terms of being able to get to all of the lead service lines. Oh, okay. Yes, the timing. So we launched the program in 2020, and that's for the whole 64 to 84,000 lines that we think there are. Um, initially, we've said we anticipate this is a 15 year program, and that's based on um, replacing about 5,000 lines a year. Well, things have gotten a little uh, changed a little bit this past year with getting federal funding, which we've been able to increase our number of replacements this year, probably doing an extra three, maybe 4,000, um, and maybe that same amount next year. Um, so that changes the timing a little bit. Um, you know, I think we're hesitant to say exactly when it will end. Um, you know, that extra funding, those, you know, extra probably 8,000-ish lines that we're able to do these next couple of years, probably shaving off a year and a half of the program. Um, what gets tough is at the end, you know, shockingly enough, not everybody says yes, even though, um, you know, this program is free, we're covering the cost of the um, replacement, we're sending out the filters for free, the testing, um, not everyone's saying yes. So it could be as we get to the end, you know, maybe things are taking a little bit longer than we had anticipated. So, you know, all in all, we're saying 15 years for the program starting in 2020. We've been able to accelerate that a little bit by year, year and a half um, based on the federal funding that we've received. Great. Thanks, Pam, for overviewing that for everybody. Um, going back to a couple of things we've talked about, like water tests and age of the home. Uh, we've got a question from Ronald about does every home need a replacement? So if you could also give um, a quick overview of how we know if a home has a lead service line and the different methods that we use to um, investigate and confirm that service line material. Sure. Um, so not all houses have lead service lines. So think about newer homes, newer builds. Of course, the current industry standard is copper, copper pipe, and that's what we're replacing with. Really, the, the, what we're looking to determine if there's a lead service line there are a couple of things. 
we're looking at the date uh, of the tap. So when the property was built and then hooked up to our main that I keep talking about on the street um, and in conjunction with the property of the home and when it was built. Usually it's the same year. Sometimes it could be off by a few years, give or take. Um, and we're looking at 1951 or before because that was the time period when actually lead was the industry plumbing standard um, to put pipe in. And after that time, after 1951, the Denver Water had banned the use of lead pipes. Um, in the 80s, it was banned nationally. So all the data that we've collected, our past records, um, knowing those things about industry standard for um, using lead pipes for water, we're using all of that data to determine that date of 1951 and before. So if we don't know, or we haven't been provided records, or we didn't do the lines ourselves somehow uh, from 1951 and before, if we see a house is built in or tapped in, we're gonna assume there's lead there. So, you know, maybe you've been in your house for 30 years and you did construction project 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and you replace that entire service line with copper. Um, we would wanna know that because if we don't have that information, we're gonna assume there's lead there. We're gonna automatically have you enrolled in the lead reduction program. And we're gonna be sending you these pictures and filters because we really wanna make sure that everyone is protected. Hopefully that answered your question, the question there. Yep. Thanks, Pam. And um, I know a couple other questions um, asking about how we can check if the pipe's been replaced. Um, so just plugging again, denverwater.org slash lead, and there'll be that interactive map there at the top where you can type in your address and see if it's in the program or not. Um, if it is in the program, um, that's us making an assumption that it could possibly um, have a lead service line at your house. Um, next up, let's try to take a question from somebody on the phone here. I'm going to come to you, Frank. It sounds like you have a question about what if people refuse the service line replacement. Uh, so, Frank, if you can hear us, please go ahead and ask your question. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we yes. can. Go ahead. Um, I was just wondering if somebody did refuse, um, are you keeping track of that? And if somebody ends up purchasing that home in the future, how would they know if that line had been or had not been replaced? Perfect. Thanks, Frank. And I'm going to um, turn that over to you, Pam, because I know um, you know the answer to this all too well. Yes. Uh, this is a near and dear one to my heart, Frank, because I help do that and track that and the things that are going on when people refuse. So yes, we get refusal. It's actually pretty minimal. I think it's maybe 2% or less, um, but we are tracking those. There's a couple ways we're going to try to go after those refusals, if you will. One is yes, um, if that property sells um, and we're notified, which a lot of times, almost all the times we are, typically when a house is purchased, the title company's letting us know we're changing the ownership on the account and that trigger is built in and if we have seen that this house was up for replacement before and we haven't gotten it because a they refused or b we just didn't hear a response we had no response back we're going to send that consent form of that information out again to try to get them so yes we're doing that that's one way um and then the second way is you know we have been in some neighborhoods for a couple years in a row because as you can imagine some neighborhoods that are really old um you know a good chunk and percent of it are lead lines so we weren't able to do maybe all the blocks in the neighborhood in one year so we're going back the next year you know working that out and that's another way we're going to try to do it so maybe we didn't get jane doe's property two streets over last year but we're you know only two streets over this year we're going to try that attempt again, see if we can conduct some outreach, have some discussions if that person's still there. Maybe there were things that we need to address that they were unsure of, or during the heavy times of COVID, you know, people just weren't comfortable with us coming into the home and things have changed and maybe we've been able to go back and get those. So yes, we are trying to get after and track down those refusals 
Um, and then Rachel, what was the second part of the question? I got caught up in that answer. <laughs> Oh, um, I think you might have answered how, how we're tracking um, those. Will we be going back to folks? Okay, good. Hopefully I got all that. Yeah, and I think I'm seeing um, just a couple questions about maybe there was some inspection done on the property, someone's property already. Um, ultimately, how do I know if... Um, We've still got lead or not. So just plugging again that map at denverwater.org slash lead, if you put your address in there and it's showing up is in the program, um, that means that um, for, from our data, um, your home still is confirmed or likely to have a lead service line. If at any point we do conduct investigation and are able to confirm that there is not lead in your service line, we will um, mail you a, a formal letter outlining that, letting you know, and then um, we'll update the status of your property on the map. That map gets updated, um, what would you say, Pam, every couple months? Yeah, um, But we do yep. send those um, letters out on a regular basis, so we will certainly notify you uh, if we are able to confirm that you are not um, at risk of having lead exposure through that lead service line. Certainly, if you can stop using um, water filters, we want to make sure we let you know that and get you out of the program. Um, one more question for you, Pam. Um, some folks are asking about um, if they can elect to stop receiving the replacement filters that we're sending out in the mail. Um, sounds like they might already have their own filtration system set up. Um, so can you let folks know if they do not want to receive filters, what that process looks like? Sure. Um, that can happen. And the best way to do that actually will be to reach out to our customer care department. You can either call, again, 303-893-2444, or email them, lead at denverwater.org. And just, they're going to ask you a few questions. We call it opting out of the filter program. So they're going to ask, of course, your address and, you know, the reason why. And, and really the reason why is not to be nosy, but we just want to make sure people are protected. Maybe you're using your own pitcher or um, filtration system that is certified to remove lead. So maybe they're asking that. Or maybe you um, have water delivered or drinking bottled water. Um, different reasons for that. So the answer is yes, you can. Um, and then just talking to customer care so that they can notate that in our large database um, of the lead program and that reason, because we do need to report that back um, to the regulators. I think either Rachel or Gianna had mentioned early on, um, you know, the program was approved and regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency and Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. And we have to report twice a year on a lot of things related to the program and they really want to know that and you know and really the reason for that is we want to make sure people are safe protected um, from lead and drinking water so short answer yes reaching out to denver water customer care to do that great thanks pam um, i think we've got time for one more question before i give that one to you pam just want to plug again for everybody um, denverwater.org slash lead in addition to that program dashboard that i mentioned that shows our yearly progress about how many service lines we've replaced and some other metrics. We also post all of our uh, reports that we send to regulators. Those are on the website as well on that resource tab. Um, so if anyone wants to do a deep dive um, into the, the really detailed reporting that we do, um, that's a great place to, to do that deep dive is to go and find those reports. We submit them on a semi-annual basis, so every six months, and they are all up on the website, have a lot of details in there. Um, so really, I think that's a good resource for folks if they wanna dive in deeper. Um, one last question for you, Pam. Uh, what about pets? I know this is near and dear to all of us on the line here. I know we've all got pets, so if you can let us know what about um, pets and filtered water. Yes, they are like our own uh, children, I feel like, at least mine are. Um, so to be safe, I would say you want to check with your veterinarian or just give your pet filtered water. Um, you know, changes in be pet behavior may be um, as a result of drinking lead contaminated water are not likely to be noticeable 
I think in general, pets are more likely to obtain lead as a result of eating an object that might contain higher lead levels. Think about paint chips or improperly glazed ceramic food or water bowls. So, you know, if you're concerned about your pet, you can definitely provide them filtered drinking water. Um, you know, again, I mentioned the way that we treat water. Um, so it is providing that layer of protection. So, I mean, I think out of the tap is fine. And like I said, more likely to probably concern for lead um, via other ways that um, pets could get into lead from, uh, like I mentioned, paint chips or things like that. Great. Thanks, Pam. Um, we are at the top of the hour. Um, just want to thank everybody so much for joining us tonight and plug again our website, denverwater.org slash lead. We also have the website fully built out in Spanish at denverwater.org slash plomo uh, for any of our Spanish speakers. Um, you can also sign up for updates at denverwater.org slash tap. Um, and again, if you do have a broken missing filter, you need a replacement sooner than we're sending them in the mail, you can go to denverwater.org slash filter, fill out that online form, and that'll get us in the queue um, to get you a replacement. And then our customer care contact information, you can find it on our website, uh, but it's 303-893-2444, or you can email us at lead at denverwater.org. Um, thanks so much for joining us and for your participation and work with us in this program. Uh, we hope everybody has a good night.